Hey everyone, welcome back to another Mattel Jurassic World Legacy Collection review. Today we're taking a look at the highly anticipated Isla Sorner Capture Pack. Look at this, we're finally getting Lost World merchandise. It's been a long time coming. You know, Mattel has dragged its feet completing the uh, main cast uh, from Jurassic Park. And a lot of us have been waiting for Lost World figures and they're finally here. We got Roland Tembo, a baby Parasaurolophus, and the modified in-gen Jeep Wrangler. Now, since this is a legacy collection set in the US, they are exclusive to Target. And look at Target being all sneaky, breaking street date. Shame, shame on you, Target. So yeah, if you've been following all the hype of people finding figures early online, you will know the legacy collection stuff is not registered locked at Target. So if you find it, you'll have no problem going through the register. I actually found this today. Uh, the Lexington kitchen set and I did find Claire uh, with the Dilophosaurus and the Ghost uh, Atrociraptor set. Unfortunately the Claire and the Ghost set were register locked. I still tried to go through the register but it got locked and they said they couldn't sell it to me. I didn't give them a hard time. It's only a few more days before these figures are officially released. You don't have to give these retail workers a hard time. They don't deserve it. The set retails for $29.99. I'll leave a link down below to Target site if you want to pre-order it. It should ship the 2nd to 17th uh, rolls around. And, you know, the 17th is the release date for all the Dominion stuff officially. And guess what? Target's closed that day. Hooray. <laughs> so I guess a lot of us will be out Monday morning uh, hunting for figures. So let's go over the package really quick before we crack this set open. You got the Jurassic World Legacy Collection logo down here in the corner. You have a nice picture of the field where the uh, InGen was trying to capture the dinosaurs to take them over to the mainland. We cut the modified Jeep Wrangler. There is Roland Tembo. We have a small Parasaurolophus. Pictures up here of how the action feature works and that new DNA scan code and whatnot. And spinning around, we get some nice pictures of the whole set and the set looks really good. Uh, have a couple quirks about the vehicle, but we'll get to that a little bit later on in the review. There's the Parasaurolophus. And down here are the other Legacy Collection figures that will be releasing soon. We have the Pachycephalosaurus, a Cosmoceratops for whatever reason, and a new Lost World Raptor, which in all honesty, I've seen in hand uh, pictures of that. It looks terrible. I hate that uh, Fierce Force Raptor mold. I think it's one of the worst molds in the entire line and I'm probably not gonna pick up this Raptor because I hate the mold so much. So A, enough about the packaging. Let's crack this set open and take a closer look. All right, let's start with a 360 degree view of this set. Man, it feels so nice to see Lost World uh, figures and vehicles in our hands. Uh, it's been a long time coming and I'm really, really happy with this set. It's by no means perfect. You know, the biggest glaring issue is this, you know, light camo green stripe on the side of the Jeep Wrangler. You know, if you look at any of the vehicles from the movie, they do not have that stripe. They're more, you know, uniformly this dark camo green color. So it's really weird that they added that. Uh, maybe Mattel felt bad, you know, they didn't give us a stripe with the uh, Dennis Nedry Jeep. So they figured they'd give us an extra stripe uh, on this vehicle. But you know, other than that, it's a really nice vehicle. I like the action feature on it, which we'll get into a little bit later on in the review. Uh, the Roland Tembo figure is great. He does look a little naked without his gun. You know, Claire comes with a gun in that Dilo 2 pack. Uh, I don't know why they didn't give uh, Roland his signature firearm. And the baby Parasaurolophus is a decent figure. It feels like like a you know prototype attack pack that never made it uh, into the set. It's a decent little figure. You know, it has the basic articulation. There's one thing about it that really, really bugs me, but we'll get into that a little bit later on in the review. But you know, all in all, for $30, it's a pretty good set and I'm happy with it. And let's just do a couple quick measurements. Roland Tembo is just a little bit over three and three quarter inches, which means he's about 118 scale. The Parasaurolophus is about seven and a half inches long and about three and three quarter inches tall as my tape measure gets stuck underneath the vehicle. And as for the vehicle itself, it is a nice boat. 10, 10 and a half inches long from the back to the uh, front of the grill right here and almost five inches tall. So yeah, a nice, nice size vehicle. And now let's first take a look at Roland Tembo played by the late great Pete Postlethwaite. I think they did a pretty good job on him. 
definitely looks the part of Roland. Like I said, the it's just a shame he does not come uh, with his Nitro Express rifle. Uh, that's a huge, huge missed opportunity. Um, you know, like I said, Claire comes with a gun. Uh, why can't Roland come with his? He needs something to hunt that Buck Rex with. So let's zoom in and take a look at that likeness. I think Mattel did a pretty good job. It's not 100% perfect, but I think it does look like Pete uh, very much. And I think there's an airing sculpted in i think it was in like in the promotional image i remember someone pointed it out but i don't see it on the face but you know like i said the head sculpt is really nice on it you got some nice details on his hat same thing with his jacket you have a nice white shirt underneath that soft plastic jacket going down to the arms nicely done you have a nicely painted wrist watch and then going down to his waist you have a nice painted brown belt nice sculpted khaki shorts you got some nice folds and wrinkles you got pockets legs are nicely done nice uh, muscular uh, legs you did not skip uh, leg day the boots are also nicely sculpted with nice brown paint uh, articulation wise head can rotate it is on a ball joint so you do get a little bit of side to side movement not too much arms can extend out that far rotate 360 degrees you get about 90 degrees of bend at the elbow you do get waist rotation he can do the full splits can kick his legs out 90 degrees knees can bend 90 degrees there's also a hinge joint and it'll let the uh, knees rotate and you can't move the legs back that far because of his butt so yeah all in all a really nice figure i think they did a good job on it um i'd be really interested to see how many lost world figures we get in the legacy line uh they can definitely do a lot uh, like Lost World has so many vehicles in it. They can go crazy. Mattel can go absolutely nuts with this line. We could get, you know, Sarah Harding with like a baby Stegosaurus, uh, Eddie Carr with the Mercedes Benz. We got the the Mobile Command Center. We can have, you know, Nick Van Owen with the uh, bolt cutters and the ability to disappear from the third act from the movie. The line is li literally limitless. And next up is the baby Paris Aralifis, the Pompadour Elvis. Um, this is a neat little inclusion. Um, we never actually saw any juvenile Parasaurs, I think, in the franchise. Unless there was like one I missed in you know the wide shot uh, when they were on uh, Isla Sorna in the Lost World. But a welcome figure. I do enjoy getting, you know... Uh, Different size dinosaurs, you know, to group them up with. It's going to look great with the larger Parasaur figures in your collection. So let's zoom in and take a look at the head. And this is where I have the biggest problem. They gave it, you know, a cat slit pupil uh, for an herbivore. And that is just wrong. Really, really weird. I don't know why they did that. It's, like, it's almost like a Hasbro mistake, like what they did uh, with the T-Rex. Uh, they gave it the same type of pupil. So yeah, um, that looks absolutely ridiculous on here. But other than that, it's a decent figure. You have a nicely sculpted uh, crest. Uh, the mouth is open just a little bit. There is no paint inside the mouth, but you can kind of make out a tongue in there. And then going down to the next, it nice folds and wrinkles. The hand claws are not painted, but they are look nice you do get some nice articulation uh on the head right here it's a nice up and down 360 degree you know movement for whatever reason arm um, can move forwards and backwards going down to the main body you have this you know, the whole figure's cast in this light brown but you have this darker brown with even darker brown blotches uh, all over the back some nice large scale sculpted in going down to the hind legs they're nice to sculpt the same thing toe claws are not painted in this is like a bare bones painted figure but you know it's okay because you know comes with a vehicle and a human figure they got to skim somewhere uh legs can move pretty much 360 degrees uh and you just get this rotation at the tail right here it should be side to side movement i don't know why they don't give them a hinge joint and lifting up right here you have the dna scan code for those who want to scan it into the fax app and let's push that back in and let's just take one quick look at the front right here, you get some nice details on the head crest, more of those uh, different tones of brown all over the place. So yeah, a pretty decent figure, just like the eye. It's just utterly, utterly ridiculous on here. But other than that, I'm happy to have a smaller Parasaur in my collection. Now let's take a look at the main reason you're getting this pack besides rolling the InGen modified Jeep Wrangler. This is a really, really nice vehicle. Like I said, the biggest eyesore is this you know, light camo green stripe on the side that does not need to be there. The whole vehicle should just be this dark 
camel green color but that's what Mattel did and I guess we just have to deal with it I guess those of us that have like an airbrush are handy with it and color match and we probably could uh, paint over that but let's pull the vehicle in and take a closer look you can see the InGen logo along the side the tires are nicely sculpted no uh, trademarks on the tire that's probably like something they want to pay for for the uh, licensing and looking at it from the front you do have the spare tire right here. Now, the thing with the spare tire is, uh, if you go back and look, uh, Roland's uh, Jeep Wrangler did not have the tire in the front. Uh, Dieter's and uh, Carter's did. So this is technically uh, Dieter's Jeep Wrangler. So I guess I guess Mattel could do a different version without the tire in the front if they wanted to. So we have a little bit more vehicle variety. You can see the headlights on the front and the grill. They are just applied with a sticker. We have the InGen logo on the hood. The other thing it's missing, it's missing the uh, netted uh, gear storage on the front. Not a big deal, but it would have been nice if they included something like that. But I guess since it's an open air box, uh, I can see people pulling that off. And the spare tire on the front does rotate. It does not come out, but it does rotate. Then go around to the side. And let's take a look inside. You can see the steering wheel and the dashboard is nicely sculpted. And then on this side right here, this is where the co-pilot is. Uh, you have a digital dinosaur uh, tracking device. I don't know if that is uh, movie accurate. And then looking at it from the top, you can see the seats are nicely sculpted. And you have some, some nice back seats that are done pretty well. Underside, really not too much paint at all. You just got some minimal car details on the bottom but yeah a nice quality vehicle i do quite enjoy it and the coolest part is if you hit this button right here the co-pilot seat will eject and you do have a button right here that will shoot one of the three included missiles that come with this so let's zoom out just a little bit and see how far this missile goes it's got some pretty good distance and some firepower behind it so it only can store one missile in there like i said you do get three of these and there's really no other storage for the actual ones other if you just want to throw them back and they'll just be rattling around the whole time and i just pop rolling in the co-pilot seat let's see how he looks when he pops out uh it's tough to get his hands around the uh, handlebar because they're so thick and just the way his, his hands are sculpted it's really tough to get them uh around that but if you have any of the fallen kingdom mercenary figures they work great uh as random in-gen workers to interact with this vehicle uh you got these guys right here so yeah if you have a bunch of these they're gonna work really well with this set all right moving on with comparisons let's compare it to some jurassic park vehicles let's just move everything over to the side here it is with the jurassic park jeep wrangler and here is rolling with Ian Malcolm. Hopefully we get a Lost World version of Ian. I'm pretty positive that we'll probably see uh, most of the main cast of Lost World uh, come out from Mattel. Hopefully it doesn't take like three years like it did with the Legacy Collection. And next up here it is with the Ford Explorer. And now let's compare it to some dinosaurs that showed up in the Lost World. Here it is with the larger Parasaurolophus. It's gonna look great when the Hammond Collection uh, Para actually releases. I'm really, really looking forward to that. And let's put the uh, baby next to the adult to see how they look. Uh, I do like the baby figure. No, other than the eyes, it is, you know, a nice little touch to have like a little Parasaur family uh, going on on your shelf. And next up here it is with the Savage Strike velociraptor which makes a better lost world velociraptor than that upcoming legacy collection one and next here it is with the always two small triceratops and next here it is with stegosaurus and lastly here it is with the new dominion t-rex uh i do have let's get the paris tail out of the way I do have the uh, old Legacy Collection Green T-Rex, and uh, yeah, the foot exploded off mine, and it broke into like five different pieces because the plastic was really, really thin on it, and I haven't fixed it yet, but it would be nice if Mattel went back and repainted some of these larger Rex molds in the Lost World colors. They all don't have to be Rexy. Uh, we will definitely buy them if they are a slightly different color to match the uh, male and female from the Lost World, so hopefully they do that someday. So final thoughts on the set. I think it's a really great set. It's definitely worth the $30. The 
in gen jeep wrangler is a really fun vehicle i like the action feature with the uh sidecar popping out the missile flying action you know hey it's an action feature been cool if it was a net but uh whatever uh roland temple looks great it's really exciting to actually see lost world figures finally in the mattel line you know the baby power not the best figure in the world especially with those you know cat slit eyes but hey it's another you know smaller version of the adult so make a nice little family group uh on your shelf so all in all i do highly recommend this set like i said targets breaking street date with uh, some of these figures this does scan at the register so if you find one you have no problem going through the register unless uh you know mattel you know drops the hammer on them and all of a sudden they're magically register locked till the 17th and also down below in the description is the pre-order uh link for this set if you want to order it online so that will do it for the review. I do have the Legacy Collection Kitchen and Counter Pack. That'll be the next review on the channel. I'm still hitting stores every day, trying to find some stuff early. If not, I'll be you know hitting Target first thing in the morning on the 18th, like a lot of people, blowing a ton of money. And for those of you that are not really into the Jurassic stuff on the channel, I did just get in uh, a few of the new 2022 Collect A figures. So I'll also be posting those review on the channel very shortly. And as always, if you're enjoying the content on this channel, show your support by hitting that subscription button just below the video. Each subscription helps out the channel tremendously and is greatly appreciated. And I'll see you guys for the next one.